know what you're thinking. I just put that video up, leaving in the dark and seeing that little buck that had one, one antler sticking up, the other one fell off. You're probably thinking, well, John, he just started early that one day just for the video. No. I've been sick all weekend. I mean, all weekend. And uh, it's a bummer because I got sick Saturday. Being the lowest one, and Bailey's birthday was Saturday. So they kind of put a halt on her birthday and we couldn't go out to eat. I feel bad for her. But so I started to feel a little bit better Saturday night. Sunday morning I felt okay and then no energy and then this morning about two o'clock in the morning I woke up again sicker than a dog. It was bad. I mean it was bad. So I texted everybody about six o'clock or something and told them what's going on. It's 9.30 now, I got this feeling okay, so I figured I better go in and get it done. But oh, what a weekend, let me tell you. Not fun. And I feel bad for the little one. But she'll have it's okay, it's not a end of the world deal, but. She wanted to go out to a special restaurant, but we'll, we'll take her there here one of these days. But I'm on my way to work. Paulie's chipping for me right now. I just passed the first truck heading to the mill. So, he's chipping some of that good wood. And frost laws are just got, Mike just called me. Frost laws are popping off too. So, it's been cold. That's excellent. So we gotta finish up a couple jobs here. Then we'll be moving back into that other county. We'll be hitting the gravy patch. So that should be fun. Hopefully we'll have another good week. We had a real good week last week. And uh, should have a good week this week. And like I said, it's cold and we got snow. And Need another good week. So hopefully everyone out there, hopefully all you guys have a better Monday than I've had so far. And uh, good start to your week. So here we go. Pass another truck. Paul's putting them out not too bad. But I'm not going to let him soak up all my gravy. There's only one bad thing when Paul runs this. He doesn't turn the heat on. He's just one of those guys who'd rather wear more clothes than turn the heat on. So I'll get her warmed up in here and have me roll on. Yeah, baby. Let's do a little bit of maintenance. I'll explain a couple things. Right here. This is supposed to be like that. There we go. It's got a little bit of rubber on there to protect it as far as wear goes. Now, let me explain what happened to all these hoses. These are all. hoses. I had to change all these. Um, I'll explain why back there. But I had to change them all. Because they got
got wore all out. Ah, that's pretty wore there. I'm catching. They got all wore out here and cracked and leaked all over. flapping around right in my face it drive me nuts but see this Parker Parker hose right here see how all these other ones are all these good years I think that's the last Parker hose on this machine well on this boom right here not on the machine see how it's all split like right here. I didn't have this machine for a year. And I had oil leaking out of like two of these hoses from this splitting apart. They just all split apart. I don't know. I'm not a huge Parker fan after that. As far as super tough it says on there. I swapped them out with uh, just whatever we had. And... These have lasted, look at, they've been on there for a long time. Like a couple of these, like I said, it was, we didn't have it a year and I replaced them. And held up real good. So you can kind of see where that one's splitting apart. That's what they did out here at the boom. They split apart right in here. And then they'd leak all over my turbo and stuff. But. Maybe it was a bad batch. I don't know the hoses. This is driving me nuts right here, too. Piece of bark. Hey, swap, fix that. But yeah, they didn't didn't work the greatest. But I don't know. A little peedly stuff. We got it switched. Got it fixed. So that's not flopping. See, it'd be, it's right in my face when I'm loading. I don't know. It was driving me bonkers. I guess I'm OCD, but I got that fixed. I, the throat of this chipper is just full of wood. I just got the last truck load. This is the only piece of wood I got left on the whole property. 
So I'm going to try to plunge it out. Come on, go through there. The big old chunk stuff gets stuck in there. I'm gonna get it out. I'm gonna get it out. bunch of chunks in there because that was all we had left with some chunks just laying around the landing here. They're all clogged up in there. I just want them out. So
people have asked, you gotta move the chipper. A lot of people ask, when I flip this cab over, if I ever leave anything in here. No. There's only one way that I make sure it doesn't happen. Okay? And that is when I know we're done chipping right now. So, I get in here before, the first thing I do, I got my boom all ready to go. I got a whole system to how I pull the chipper up. And it just gets ingrained in your brain, you know? Kind of. The first thing I do when I get out of this cab is it's ready to get folded. Because if I don't get it right now, I just got done chipping. If I don't get it right now, I will forget and leave something in here. And I've had wrenches in here before, a hammer maybe, and I really don't want, because these are glass windows on the sides, the front's not. Really don't want that bouncing around when it's upside down and knock a window out or something. So, that's the first thing I do, is when I get out of here right now, I'm going to have this thing completely clean. And I got my backpack and I used to, I might look retarded with a backpack, but I don't even care anymore because it's pretty nice to have when you have some, a little bit of equipment and whatever, gloves. And I got some stuff in here. But I'm going to get it all out. That way I don't flip it over. Um, I did hear a great story. I heard a, I heard a great story from the guys at Moorbark. Um. I heard it from the crew that actually it happened to, the boss. They came and they uh, did some classes at Moorbark. They come out and watched us run and they walked around the chipper and, and different things. But they were training a new guy, set up just like this, a flail like this. And it's always fun training a new guy. But on the side of this is the valve to control the cab. He got his, in the learning process, got his bucket over into that valve and smashed it with the bucket. Okay. There's two guys in here. Two guys, because one guy's showing him. And it flips him over. The only problem was is they were spun around the opposite way. So it flipped him over into that. <laughs> and then busted the red dot heater air conditioning unit off the back. I'd have loved to see that. <laughs> I'd have loved to see that. Um, I'm sure the boss wasn't happy, but he said, <laughs> the guy said that they just, oh, flipped it back over, and I'm not sure if whatever they had to fix down there in the valve, but the way they went to chip and didn't even slow them down at all. <laughs> but, but. It's not easy to get your bucket over there, but let me tell you, I, I, I guarantee it can be done. That was a funny story on a cab flip that I heard on these style chippers, but I just got, you know, a bevel body, a couple rags, those are fine. A couple fittings that I threw up in here. I'll throw them in there. I try to keep it all nice and clean as much as I can, but I make sure my heat's off, um, everything's shut off, everything's good to go, I slip out of here. The main thing is, is don't fall off on this thing, because you can fall off on this thing pretty easily. There's a catwalk that's, well, there's a, not a catwalk. There's a couple posts and a chain link that went across. Uh, I never put it out there because you're, when you go to spin your cab around, it hits that. We never used it. I got up here on a Monday morning one day. That weekend, somebody got up on the chipper and decided to put that across there. I never even paid attention. Went and spun this thing around. I heard some noise and got out and the pole was bent over and that was bent up. Needless to say, I was slightly irritated. People don't want to know. But 
when I get out of here, I get it cleaned out so nothing gets broke when I flip it. That's the most important. Here comes Paul. Let's see what's going on. Get you straightened out here. Sorry, bro. Is that on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on. I'll shut it off. I blew just a little bit of chips on the ground because I had that garbage. I had a couple crooked pieces of pop was stuck in there and that's where you get stuff like this bro because it's just so crooked that it just it's a mess anyways a lot of people ask me there's Paul how far this chipper will throw chips I'm at like 50 foot right now and our vans are 50 and 53 footers so they're like right in here okay the front of the chip van then you got the front of the truck but it, it packs them into that 53 foot van, let's say. Easily throws them over 100 foot. Easily. I mean, this thing throws them a long ways. And uh, yeah, you're at easy 100 foot here, but you still got chips scattered another. I don't know, there's chips laying way out here. There's a chip right there. So, it'll chuck those chips a long ways. That's how much that's how much power those paddles are smacking that wood. It is hitting them hot, fast, and in a hurry. Okay, but it throws chips a long ways. Cat power. Can't follow it.